I'm not just writing history. I am making it. I have the brain of a historian and the clapback of a comedian. You better come with sources because I always check footnotes. Welcome back to another episode of Historians on Housewives. You're here with me, Casey. Dr. J. Mill, the millionaires. Max Spear on a teacher's salary. <laughs> and Martina Baldwin. <laughs> and calling in. I'm, Je- oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Edwards. <laughs> we got two special guests today. Woo! So exciting. And it is a special episode today because... This episode is all about BravoCon, and Jessica, Max, and Jen all got to be our Bravo Demics on site. So it was it was wonderful. I just can't tell you the jealousy. I just can't. It was pretty magical. It's what I imagine going to the Oscars was like. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the first day I was too cool for school. Right? It's like you're too cool for school, and then all of a sudden. It just happens. It comes over you. I imagine it, if I liked Disneyland, this is what it would feel like. If I liked <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> Jen, you're in New York I was all the time. I of my wedding. Oh, wow. wow. I was going to say, yes. what? Since yeah, it was, I had a good wedding, too. It was a Long Island spectacle. Oh, my it gosh. Was wow. Kind of experience. Because I was going to say, you're in New York, so I wondered if this was, like, a big to-do for you or if it was kind I of, mean, like, it, just normal New York. I live in the Bronx, um, so I don't really feel like... I mean, I am obviously a part of New York City. I pay New York City taxes for sure. Uh, but I don't really feel like I'm part of the mix of Manhattan. So anytime I go to Manhattan, you know, even to see like a movie at an art theater or um, to see the holiday windows or to see a Broadway show, I feel very much like a bridge and tunnel kid uh, going into the city. So every time it's kind of a magical and, and kind of an event. I would argue, Jen, that the Bronx, I mean, that's the boogie down. That's where it all happens. Um, it's true, but I'm in the Northwest Bronx. Oh, you're not on the suburban. six. You're not on the six, like J-Lo. no, oh. no, no, <laughs> like J Lo. I'm not Jenny on the six. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So today, our special guest, uh, Dr. Baldwin, Martina Baldwin, is going to be doing most of the interviewing um, of the attendees of BravoCon. So many questions. So many questions. We wanted her to go with us. Unfortunately, the timing didn't line up. That would have been so epic. But the next time, we're all going as a delegation. We need to go next year together. And I didn't get to go. Oh, sorry. This year. It's 2020. Yeah, we're in 2020. And I didn't go, so I'll maybe pop in with follow-up questions here or there. I did watch a lot on television. I feel like I didn't have that immersive as an experience at home and I, that's part of what I want to talk about also I feel like there was very limited television stuff there's a lot of internet based stuff you could do but there wasn't a ton of TV stuff mm-hmm. but anyway uh, my first question is how much did you pay because all the articles that cover BravoCon go crazy with these the scalping prices and all that and I know you guys got in on the actual you bought them from Bravo the first time they were released, right? So with taxes and fees, I believe each of our tickets were $333. And that was the full enchilada. No, no, we were on the low. We were on the we're going to check it out end of the show. No, meaning the whole three You got days. all three days, but you did not get VIP access. Oh, I, it was called Ooh. SVIP. No, no, no. Right? no it no. was VIP and SVIP. SVIP oh. was like special variant. We were people. general admission. We were For just going days. to check it out. Right, okay. And, and there was something above you? Mm, there were it, two things above us. I know the SVIP, but there was another VIP. It yeah. didn't matter what was above us because both with Max and maybe with Jen, I feel like we sat in the areas we weren't supposed to. Yes. At some point, we all <laughs> ended up close to the stage. And I, like at front of the lines and stuff. So what they would do is when you would go to see a panel, um, they would segregate the SVIPs and the VIPs from the general admissions. General admission had to be at the back of the room. Mm -hmm. Um, But the security, which is sort of an ongoing theme of BravoCon, were young, let's say, and didn't 
master crowd control that well. And so you could just walk up and if no one bothered you, you could get a lot of the VIP experience without sort of... Um, oh, that'll change. But oh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. There was like a sweet spot to sit in the room in order to actually get photos. And so where was that? Was that also at the front of the room or no? That was in the middle of the room. So what they would do is a panel would happen and about 15 minutes before the panels end. Um, people would start lining up on the left and the right sides. Mm -hmm. They the would room. allow you to. You can't just hang out and be in line. They would it's officially it, allow you to. Okay. People did, though. So you put your drink and down right, I got by the, a lot of right by the concessions, <laughs> yeah. and you got in line. Okay. Say that again, Jen. Say it again, Jen. Oh, I'm sorry. I said I kind of got kept getting in trouble, like, repeatedly at this one panel trying to get in line. Mm -hmm. Because people were like, no, 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 there's no lining up. Which panel were you getting in trouble at? Oh, it was the working people panel it was always shannon bedore and reza and that guy from summer house wait is that when we got in trouble or is that a different panel where you got yeah. in trouble <laughs> no that was you and me we got we kept getting in trouble jen and i got shushed at this panel <laughs> wait what was the, the title oh of yes this one? one woman was very into it it was i don't remember about people who work yeah it was like entrepreneurs people that work People who work. It was okay. Good. It was. Yeah. They could only get like four people on the panel. It should be like people who schlep their <laughs> stuff. That's what it seems like. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So Jen and I. But that would be everyone. Jen and I definitely got shushed. We were. We were. You know. I just bought my BravoCon shirt um, that said, "I need my own show on Bravo." Jen and I <laughs> saw each other for the first time in like what at least ten or twelve years because we knew each other yeah. prior. So we were talking about Bravo and we were catching up and we got the shh. And if you've ever been shushed by someone from the East Coast, you're not just shushed. <laughs> you are then told where to go and what to do. So if you are going to continue and just um, talk, you can move over there. Who said this to you? The woman who shushed us. Wait, is that an employee? No, it was just a woman in the crowd. She wanted us to take our, talk, our conversation and sit by someone else and annoy them. And what would you say? We just said, okay. <laughs> oh, Okay. I think I moved up two rows or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we moved a little bit, but not much. It was a shush with a middle finger. It was a shush. Okay, we need to know the panels that y'all attended. That's like a... In order. <laughs> sure, in order. So the first panel that I attended, that we attended, was with Jill Zarin, Kim, um, Kim Richards, oh, Kim and, Richards. Uh, and Kim Zolziak. Is like this the OG, OG panel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gina Keogh... And I want Was that Adrian right? Maloof or Tamara? Wasn't Caroline Manzo on that panel? Yeah, and Caroline Manzo. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really weird that when Jill Zarin came out, she brought her dog with her. So she's carrying this small dog with her I as people are screaming. Yeah. So I felt very bad for her dog. The woman who wrote well, She's the trying vulture. to make that dog happen. Yes, she's trying to make him a, a jiggy. A jiggy, but there's mm -hmm. only one jiggy. There's only one jiggy, and the woman who wrote the Vulture recap said that her highlight at BravoCon was touching Jill Zarin's dog. So, wow, it worked. Mm -hmm. She got in the press with that dog. Oh, we wow. had better <laughs> moments, don't you think? Okay, so. I have to say, Jill was one of my top moments because I was walking out with Matt Friday night, and Jill Zarin was going in for Watch What Happens Live, and I just kind of ran over to her, and she was laughing and joking with lots of people who are shouting things at her. But I walked right over, and I just said something like, Jill, we're, we all miss Bobby so much. And she kind of, she was smiling, and she stopped, and she froze, and she made this eye contact with me where she just bored into my soul. And she was, she just said, thank you. Thank you so much. But it was like, you could feel the charisma of this woman. Wow. Really just, her, like, it really was a moment that's going to stick with me. That's wild. An actual connection. Like a yes, it connection. felt like a connection. You're saying they're right. not dead inside. That's mm -hmm. what you're saying. <laughs> and the panel was well, like, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was saying, well, that was it. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so so OGs and the panel was moderated by Andy. Oh, that is an OG. That's a good panel. And might yeah. I interject for those who are listening? I must say I wasn't close to him, but Andy Cohen, literally in the flesh, very attractive. Like the camera yeah. doesn't do him justice. 
Like I, mean, I totally yeah. see why why men are men and women are calling in, at throwing themselves at, at Andy because he is very attractive. He's also see that. very charismatic. Extremely. Max and I um, got to like shake his hand backstage. It'll watch what happens live in Los Angeles two years ago. Right when Max wouldn't let me go, <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't give up his ticket for Jessica to go with me. <laughs> um, one of my friends that works for Bravo got us on the VIP list for the Watch What Happens Live in LA featuring um, Lena Waith and Nini Leakes. Yes. Amazing. And wow. It was so phenomenal. It was like. Who lot- bartended? Who bartended? It had to be someone silly, like oh. a Vanderpump kid. Well, I know that Well, James, James was DJing. Yes. Kind of. Kind, kind of. of. Just standing there in the I corner. Mean, air quotes. Was, air he, quotes. He yes. was doing air DJing so there was like music playing but he wasn't I don't think he was, he was actually impersonating doing, a DJ. he wasn't on the ones and the twos he was not okay. <laughs> I don't remember who was bartending because well there was an actual bar that they just kept bringing drinks from so there was a lot of drinking before the show started I think no I think it was just a legit bartender because yeah. I feel like I would have remembered oh who. it wasn't well, I feel like in those LA shows he always put something some like auxiliary character but i know later the vanderpump rules kids kids i always call them kids um no right yeah. they are no longer <laughs> they they're homeowners were. okay max yeah yeah they, it's are. Fine. they are literally the man they are <laughs> so anyway that, that okay, is say, andy cohen is very impressive yes. in person and attractive according to jessica which very I'm very i like that i like that you said that very um okay so og panel moderated by andy wonderful Next, I would say that the high, the next panel, I'll say, was the I went to. I don't know if you went. Wasn't to the it. next one the slavery panel? I'm sorry. This Wasn't is the Southern Charm, Charm one next? <laughs> oh yeah, oh. <laughs> actually, Jessica had a moment at the oh. Southern Charm panel too. Oh no, I tried so hard. So I don't watch that show, but I I know you don't. You have you have thoughts. I had no intention of asking a question, but there. Not only is there a great place in the audience to sit and take pictures, there's a great place to get in line to ask questions. So Max and I had this moment, like who's going to be where, who's going to go get in line for the pictures, and who's going to get on the mic. Well, we knew I was going to get on the mic. But I said, Max, I can't. I simply can't because I won't be able to control myself. He gave me a great question. I'm sending text back to Casey. What do you think about this? Max gave me a great question. The question was essentially trying to promote the show and asking them a question at the same time. So it was something to the effect of like, you know, as historians, we're really interested in, you know, your family histories and we want, you know, we know a lot about John C. Calhoun and blah, blah, blah. But we were wondering if there's something about your family histories that we don't know yet. And I will say that Jessica and Max's question and Jessica at the mic made it in to multiple articles about this panel at BravoCon. But in each article, they clipped out who asked and they clipped out the Historians on Housewives podcast and just led But the, the clip answer. is running with their answers. So yes. I feel like we did do something. So... I was ready. I was like, okay, Max. He's like, I said, that's a great question. So I went up. And if you know anything about the history of slavery, you know that 1919, uh, tw- 2000, sorry, 2019 was the 400 year um, commemoration of Africans landing in the U.S. So I tried to go in not as a scholar of slavery. And I opened my mouth and said, hi, we're from Historians and Housewives. And we're like, uh, historians and I tried to get the question out and next thing you know I'm talking about the whole giving the whole lecture about slavery in the U.S. and then I said but to that's this, not the question I'm gonna ask she's not doing it justice because the look on their face was like where is this going because she goes well we know that it's the 400 year anniversary of 1619 when the descendants of slaves like first came to they got Virginia. really nervous you could see some backs tightening up a Uh little bit i'm sure the producers puckered a little bit yeah and then she saved it and asked the question that i just said but it came from nowhere like i had rehearsed and i just said i am what i am i mean i can't get up there and not ask about slavery but their answers were really great Catherine talked about how she her uncle had been killed by Al Capone. Was it her uncle? Yeah, it was somebody in her family who was killed by Al Capone. A great, great uncle. And then 
Shep, who, you know, I don't watch the show, but Shep, to his credit, wanted to continue answering the question. I figured because I bumbled it, I sat down. I was nowhere to be found. But Shep was like, well, you know, I have a relative, a, an ancestor, uh, Mary Chestnut, Chestnut Boy, Boykin, kind of. who we talked about in the first episode. And he said, and she left a diary. And so I completely missed this moment. Like, he picked it up and was ready to go. But, um, yeah, so it was a great panel. It made it in there. But I was like, not the best move. <laughs> But I guess it worked. I yeah, loved it. I loved those. It was quintessential Jessica, though. I just couldn't. I tried. I loved those I think uncomfortable it sounds moments. Like it went off without a hitch. Well, originally, gone any better. we were going to make Max ask the slavery questions because it would come sound better talking to white people from a white person. But then he was like, oh, <laughs> no, not. I'm definitely the person that doesn't get the mic. You get the mic. Okay. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. It Max. happened the way the ancestors meant it to happen. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Max is also the guy who you send to like hold that spot in line and get jostled. Absolutely. That's mm-hmm. what I told him. I was like, you are tall. You are big. You are menacing. You're leading the way. Yeah. The little people got trampled, didn't we, Jen? <laughs> Yes, we did. Well, Jen taught me the New York, how you bump people with your elbow. So by the end, I was I was ready. You had it down. Jen, didn't you go to Dorenda's workout panel? Oh, my God. I did. That was a real highlight. The door aerobics. Door aerobics with three and O's. And Andy two also O's. was there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So Tell I, us about I, it. I got, I got a door aerobics mug yes. signed in the bazaar first the day before and had a whole conversation with Dorinda and Hannah. Um, during this daughter and that was amazing did she make it um, nice she really did and then at one point she looks at me and she's like i have a line i'm sorry we have to keep going and so i i like that she was curating her own line yeah um, because i can talk about this later but i also i had a very long conversation with craig conover in line at the bazaar where the handlers had to come over to me and say we're sorry we have to keep going and, and craig just completely ignored them and kept talking but oh, anyway wow. the nice. aerobics was I did aerobics with my conferencing clothes on and my first <laughs> backpack on my back. There were lots of people just chucking their, their bags on the side of the room. And I'm not doing that in New York City. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm too uh, suburban a kid. But I, I just, I, you know, uh, there were so many people there in 80s costumes and, you know, leg warmers and neon um, leotards. And then Andy Cohen came out in a Dorobic shirt and shorts. I have pictures I can share. Yes, um, he did part of it. <laughs> and the I forget his name. Is it is it Paul? Maybe, but the the older gentleman who did the Dorobic on the Real Housewives of New York with Dorinda oh. was also there doing them. H- how many uh, people were there? Do you think? Oh, 100, 200. And this it was, was the ballroom oh, on the first floor. Oh, more than that. There had to be because the ballroom. There, it, there were hundreds. It yeah. was hundreds. included yeah. in, in your, yeah. mm-hmm. in your what, admission. Yeah, it was, it was one packed. of the panels that you could go to. It was a panel. Max okay. and I were at the OC panel, which was great, but we weren't doing aerobics. Is that right? Or did yeah. I have yeah. a plan I, to catch? I, I think many stories. I think you left before um, the photos, but you stayed for the panel and just because we're on it now oc was still fighting from the previous season when they came out shannon was in a terrible mood that day because of you can never tell when shannon's in a bad mood she never lets it you know makes it obvious never never <laughs> goes to the hospital never she, hyperventilates no she's she very, really keeps it close yes to the she does she, she was still it. upset about the bull about kelly hitting her with was the bowl. she yeah no. yeah yeah i would hold on to that for a long time too uh, I mean, it's fine to hold on to it, but it's just... I mean, the audience was not on her side. Yeah. I no, mean, well, poor Shannon. Also, we're, I mean, the audience is over it, right? And they it happened for them much longer ago than it happened for us. So yeah. it's got to be at least a year. Yeah. I feel like the OC women um, that Max spoke to were really interested in his H on H swag and how to maybe be on the show at some point. Bronwyn in particular was very interested in H on H. Blow me over with a, <laughs> what, what's that phrase? Wait, what? I missed what, that part. How do you say it? Happen? Like blow me over with a, a feather? I don't know what you, what that phrase is, but. Knock me over with a feather. Knock me over with a feather. Bronwyn so I is happen- thirsty. Sorry, She's thirsty, Jen. That's all. Go ahead. So I had to, uh, I, I, I absolutely agree. Um, and I happened to spend a long time, uh, I forget the name of the site, but I was in the, the kind of hangout space 
where they had the bazaar and the experiences. And I was, I spent a lot of time there while I was waiting to record my Real Housewives intro. And so I was sitting on the couches there grading as an academic does um, and kind of people watching. And I saw Bronwyn's husband constantly just walking around the room, coming out of the bazaar where Bronwyn was selling something. Um, and he would just walk around and keep trying to make eye contact with people and wait to be recognized. Did he have um, a statement with necklace statement on? Necklace. He must have had oh, a yes. statement necklace on. And very few people would stop and recognize him and take a picture with him. And Kyle from um, Summer House was doing the same thing, just coming around, trying to make contact, eye contact. Meanwhile, you know, Melissa Gorga comes through to go to a panel and people go wild and chase her down across the room. I would have chased her. Yeah. In that moment, you probably could have had the longest conversation with Sean. Wyndham Burke. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, especially if you complimented his necklace, you could have had like full access i think to photos he was clearly, <laughs> yeah, yeah i he wish was i knew clearly that the, hungry i wish oh, i knew very. that at the time because i would have told you to like just say like you are a fashion icon for oh me. yeah you have to where do you get your necklaces <laughs> you gotta fluff it up. yeah wait before we continue can you guys tell us about the bazaar and about the experiences because i read a lot about them the bazaar in particular really interests me interests interests wow interest me from a marketing perspective and branding perspective and the experience thing is also it's it's really parallel i think that it's the digital experiences right like the pump thing and Mm -hmm. tell us about that tell us about the bazaar and then the experiences go ahead jim so the bazaar the bazaar was bizarre um first (laughs) of all i i feel like i did BravoCon all wrong because i just kept waiting in lines for things um and i missed a big chunk of the panels um, because I was just waiting, but the waiting did become a people watching opportunity where I saw chef and Andy and uh, um, Catherine and um, Miss Patricia went past in her limo waving at the crowd multiple times. So, so I had to wait in line outside the bazaar building for two hours. And then I had to wait inside the building for another hour just to get into the bazaar. And then inside the bazaar, they clearly did not give it enough space. Uh, where there were little stands, kind of in a, U, a big U in one room, and there was a in the inside the bazaar there was a Bravo stand where you could buy Bravo swag, but not a tote bag because they did not buy enough tote bags. Right, they ran out. Yeah, very upsetting. Uh, then there were tables for Craig Conover selling pillows and Shep selling trucker hats. And the Countess selling candles Cynthia and Bailey's, a variety of things. Cynthia Bailey bags, not sold by Cynthia, sold by someone else. All of it was sold um, from someone else is what I read. Uh-huh. Right? None of them were there, except for it sounds like Dorinda may have been there. There were a few. Oh, there. Dorinda was there. Countess Leanne was there. Craig oh, was there. Ariana and Tom Sandoval was there selling. Um, they didn't actually have the, the cocktail book, but they had the cover of the cocktail book that they would sign for you if you showed that you bought it on Amazon. Um, the Wives of WeHo wine was being sold, but nobody was there for that. Um, I drank several free samples of that wine in line. <laughs> was, it, was it good? <laughs> um, no. That's a no. Yeah. It was wet. It was wet. Um, it was free. <laughs> um, Kyle was from Summer House was selling Loverboy. Catherine Dennis had a stand, a very large stand, out of proportion with the rest of the bazaar, where she was selling... Um, stools or children's furniture or something but she was not there captain sandy from below deck was selling captain sandy shirts um dorinda was selling mugs and t-shirts bronwyn was selling something um that dark i don't, stuff, I don't know I what bet. that dark i don't know clothing that her daughter does oh uh, maybe it was uh, um, so basically you would line up for each person you would line up at each stall um and it was maybe 10 or 15 minutes not much at all for even the most popular people like Luann and Craig to be able to get there. And then once you got to the front of the line, you had to buy something Mm -hmm. and then they would sign whatever you bought. Um, With Craig, I bought a tote bag that said, what's wrong with my sewing. (laughs) And, and then you would get a conversation and there would be people there to take your phone and take a picture. Um, Craig is a full on body, full body hugger. Um, And we had a whole conversation about ADHD and medication and he did not want to stop talking to me about it. He um, um he really wanted to talk during the panel about how he was five months sober at the time from Adderall. 
that was like yeah that received a very big applause wow yeah so but it was that, almost like you were buying the opportunity to stand and have a conversation with these people absolutely. for fifteen dollars. Fifteen was everything priced the same? Well, you could buy uh, the bag I bought was fifteen dollars. The mug I bought was I think either ten or fifteen. The shirts were more. Um, you could have bought a candle from Luann I think for fifteen or twenty. Um, I don't know how much the Captain Sandy shirts or the Bronwyns. I you know I didn't buy those things. Um, it did not come from BravoCon, but one of the Christmas gifts Max and I received this year was um, a prayer candle with Vicky on it. Love it. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's lovely. And it was, it was that's really lovely. like a joint like housewarming Christmas present. Wonderful. So it was, it was packaged as we moved into our new house and we, it was like one of the first things in the new house was a, a Vicki Gumbelson prayer candle. So appropriate. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things about the bazaar, they also had food, you know, the bazaar, you can buy things, but then they have food like, and they have the wine. But, and, and Jen, I don't know if you took advantage of this or if Max, you took advantage of this, but State Farm had the she shed. Did you yeah. see the she shed? They erected a she shed where you could, you know, the commercial where her she shed is burning. Mm -hmm. They erected a she shed. You could go in, you could recharge your phone. You could get some little nail polish from State Farm. It was just a quiet little space in the middle of this complete um noisy chaos chaotic you there were so many you know there were a few of us just sitting relaxing in the she shed so for the record there is an intact she shed that mike traveled to the next bravo con to me like that was the highlight that and my cynthia bailey bag i was like wow an actual she shed wow maybe they i mean so they sponsored it. yeah they did interesting um, and they were coming around with macaroons and State, nail polish so while i Yes. Yes. So because I spent a lot of time in that space, people just kept pushing nail pol State Farm nail polish and State Farm macaroons on me. So I also had a lot of macaroons. How it's were the macaroons? Had, were they, they good were at not macaroons? Very good. <laughs> they were not. This, it's but so yes, it was free and available and I was hungry. It's really strange to me that just doesn't seem like a fit at all. State Farm being such a large part of the event. It totally works. Sponsor. I mean, it works because they're pushing with products that they don't actually sell in real life. So, I mean, they made it work, but it just doesn't seem like they sell insurance. What's the, it didn't seem like it was a, a, a it would work. I can see where in your yeah, mind, it what, doesn't, but if you had been in the chaos, which was BravoCon, and there was an open oasis where it was quiet and you could just sit in comfy um, chairs and yeah. charge your phone. It completely worked. It was so You were very necessary. grateful for State Farm. Oh, yes. And there was water. It was wonderful. But now will you move your insurance over to State Farm? Oh, no. I'm a farmer's family. Okay. I have been forever. So then maybe it's not working so much. I mean, the nail polish was nice. In terms of functionality for you at the event, but like working in terms for return on investment, I don't see that like demographic but it is, being just weird to me. It is word of know. mouth, though. We kept yeah. talking about State Farm. So that's true. This is basically a three minute advertisement for State Farm. And, and the she shit. Just keep going. Okay. The digital experiences. The, that's, I'm excited about that. The Different thing, place. I don't know if this was in the bazaar because I was always, I just followed the map, but mm -hmm. I don't remember if it was called the bazaar where I was. But um, they had a mini replica of the Watch What Happens live set Cute. that you could yeah. take your photo in. Do you remember? I didn't see that. Yeah. That's cute. It had a long line too. Yeah. I didn't get to do that. Yeah, I, I had a photo taken in there. Um, That's cool. And we'll post all this to the website yeah. as well. Um, and then while I was doing that, the Toms were being interviewed right next to me. And I am wearing basically a big billboard for historians on Housewives. And so I would just sort of place myself right behind the interview so anytime you uh there is a clip that's posted to bravo tv.com or wherever they posted all these interviews and stuff look in the background because you may see me just Amazing. sort of standing there that's so funny in the in the well, H on H black I, and orange <laughs> yeah you saw that i saw you in a commercial on tv i took a screenshot and sent it to you i was so surprised that you saw that Wait, because what? it's okay so I so Bravo start Bravo concerts at ten a.m. Uh -huh. The first day I got there at eight a.m. Thinking who's going to be lining up? Yeah, figure I get a bagel, some schmear, wait in line with coffee, and it'd be fine. I get there and I would say there were fifteen, twenty people all ready to go for Bravo Con. Uh -huh. 
and they had news cameras interviewing people. So once again, I am just standing behind people. I don't really want to talk to the yeah, cameras, yeah, yeah. but I want to advertise That's the amazing. show. And somehow Jen with her eagle eyes caught the like, I would say 0.5 seconds that you see me in one of the Bravo con commercials. With his big Historians on Housewives sweater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. You nailed it. And it's like November. So it's freezing cold uh, outside. Yeah. yeah. Especially for us Californians. Yeah. Yeah. It was Can I just, a mental picture, when you talk about the bazaar, I'm thinking of like an academic book fair at a conference. Is that sort yeah. of what Precisely. it was like? Okay. I just yeah. want to have but a vision. very populated. Yeah. Very much so not at all like an academic. Much but. more interesting people. <laughs> much more. Okay. They had the bazaar. Picture the pen. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Jen. I was just going to say, picture the penguin booth where they're selling $5 books. Um, right. Somebody's giving something away, like a keychain on but the it's side. Like set and set up in that way. Right. Set up so, like exactly. a, con a convention center. Right. You walk in, you see this she shed and the yeah. places to eat. Then I think some of the digital things were a little behind the she shed. They were in the bazaar? They were, well, there's. Like a, no, like the an academic conference, in order to get into the bazaar where you bought things, you had to go through a different entry. So you almost had to have your name badge and walk like at a book display at a conference. Uh -huh. So you walk in one side. They only let you go on one side. You go in. There's food. There's the she shed. There's the digital experiences where you can, re you can record your tagline and some of those th fun things that Jen did. And then you walk into another room because it's like another room in the conference center. And that's where you see the bazaar. That's where everyone is hawking their goods and their wares. Okay. And but you could take your food back and forth. But it was almost they had security when you walked mm -hmm. into the bazaar. It was almost like the book fair where you was like, here's my little name tag. Yeah. But okay, so the digital experiences were very hyped up in the recaps that I watched or read. So the van was this the Vanderpump rules like you could slow motion turn that mm -hmm. thing, Jen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, did anybody else do them? No, just I was you. the only one who did it. Too many lines. It was amazing oh I, I only oh did the gosh. housewives one i didn't have time to do the, the the vanderpump rules one was very popular i regret i didn't do it on saturday when the line was only 40 minutes but uh, on sunday i was not leaving until i had recorded that thing and i had to meet my family in long island for my mother-in-law's birthday dinner <laughs> so i had to be on a train in Penn Station at a certain time, and I arrived in the, to New York and the first to the city, and the first thing I did was put my name on this list, and it was something like like five or six hours from that point, um, and then I said no 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 it'll die down. I did something else. I came back and it was still going to be four hours. So I put my name down. I sat down and graded. They had a messaging system where they would message right. you every so often how much longer it is until you're next in line, and it still you know it was going to be. I was going to miss my train by five minutes, so I had to negotiate with people in line to be next. Anyway, I finally get to the front, and there's a cameraman, there's a producer, um, and there was there was like some other handler. I forget what they were doing, um, but the producer would tell me, "Okay, now you're going to do this," and he would give me an apple, and you're going to hold the apple in this way. He's like, "You want to do something dramatic or fun, or there there should be movement. Either you should spin around, or you should hold it up, or." Um, and I said, can I take a bite out of it? And he said, that's amazing. Do that. Um, so I pretended to take a bite out of the apple. And then and the, they would say, three, two, one. And he would point, and then I would do the action. Um, and then they would say, okay, we got it. And then he would say, okay, for this next segment, you have to do this. Um, so there were three segments. Um, we filmed a bunch of stuff. And then they, they put it all together. Um, and 20 minutes later, while I'm on a train in Penn Station, I get a, a text, and it's my video. I need to see it. Can you send that to us so that we can oh, feature sure. you on our H on H stuff? I will do. I just really can't wait to see that. This is a big commitment. I, I'm so thrilled. It's like way more intensive than, you know, like Disneyland debut rides. Oh, it, was, it was a marathon. It was intense. The so how many digital experiences were there? There were three. What was the third one? I, th I know I read about it, but I can't was it remember. A I know there was a tagline. That's all I know. There was that a, doesn't sound familiar. There was a tagline. Oh, that was another element. You had to. You couldn't say your own tagline. You had to pick one of the existing taglines. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, so oh, I picked Dorinda. So you hear Dorinda talking. And do you mouth it? Right? 
Uh, nope. They, they had me film my three things and then they put my name up. Um, but they have Dorinda talking, saying her tagline and you could pick, it was a list of taglines, but you could only pick up. A, a would you have, one. would you have reused your same H on H tagline if you could have? Yeah. Okay. So I would not have, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, remind me. Well, you know, this. I have three other taglines prepared and ready to go. So, who knows? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I've when got, we, I've got we multiple used, seasons. We used to joke that Jen could be our person on the street. I mean, Jen out Bravo conned Max and I because yes. she had all these kind of kitschy experiences. Like, if we had just been able to sit, we would have had them too. But it was like, I feel like. If I combine my experience with Jen's experience or Max experiences with Jen's experience, then you get the perfect experience. But Jen had all these yeah. great. Didn't you have a picture with um, was it Jax or Tom or one of Tom those? Guys? That was a, that was one of those moments. So again, I I I'm jealous of the way you guys did BravoCon because you got to see much more, many more of the panels than I did. And I I would I love conferencing. I love the AHA. I love the Burke. So getting to see those panels. Uh, would have been more amazing. But again, I kept getting locked out of the spaces because so they were overcrowded. So then I had to do these other things. If I got but, one yeah. more text from Jen saying, I'm not standing in line at the Hammerstein ballroom. <laughs> I will not do it again today. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I was walking from one place. But I think I was eating a meatball <laughs> walking <laughs> around. And, um, you know, I so like I said, I, I kept doing it wrong in that I kept having conversations with people rather than getting pictures. Um, so like I said, I ran up to Jill Zarin, I talked with her, I didn't get a picture with her. I went over to Captain Sandy and I talked to, with her about how she was such an inspiration to me as a, cause I'm chair of my department and the way she mentors and leads people without feeling strident while she's doing it. And that she's clearly a woman in a man's world. The and, you know, I'm, I'm, and then I walked away, <laughs> I walked away and I, I, I have no picture. And so while I'm waiting in line, I'm seeing these millennial women right in front of me you know, everybody who came out of the building, whether it was Shep or Andy or um, whatever Bronwyn's husband's name is, um, <laughs> I, like they would just jump the velvet rope, like like these amazing leaps over the rope. They would have their cameras out. They would say, Shep, 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 follow. They would get the picture and they would run back in line. No conversation. And I said, well, they have something more lasting here with this photograph. So I kept trying to push myself that way. So finally I managed it with Sandoval where I, I was holding this bowl with a meatball in it. And he came, he came, he's, well, I saw him approaching me and I turned and I put the meatball down on a table and I said, could I have a photo with you? And he's like, sure, sure, sure. Um, and he, I, I hold up my camera. He said, nah, 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 let me do it. And he takes my camera and I don't know what he did, but it's like my iPhone folded out and became like a three panel terminal of filters and things you could swipe and do and he's taking this picture and he's turning the phone so it's getting all of these angles and it's a great picture i gotta say like he knew everything about how to do my phone that That's is so incredible. tom sandoval yeah, and is. like how he likes to take pictures with people yes. that actually was not my experience getting a photo with tom sandoval so <laughs> right after so so after he's well maybe doing, it's because you're a man because when i met him at, at sir he was so like that yeah, I basically like forced Tom to give me a photo against his will. <laughs> so, so him and Schwartz. I think it was Schwartz were um, doing a. Um, were they mixing something? Yeah, yeah, they were um, um, gonna do a um, expose of like their shots or of, like Tom Tom. Yeah, drinks. yeah, they were gonna make uh, mixed drinks and like do like a class. Doing is mixed it drinks. a panel? Was it? No, okay. I think it was in the bazaar. Also, they were oh. going to be up on a stage, and people were just going to crowd around them while they make. Well, I guess Sandoval makes drinks, and Schwartz just sort of looks Stands there. there. With, a demo uh, yeah. with a matching necklace. Yeah, yeah. And um, so they're giving their interview, and then you have to. They they would have to walk out, walk by a velvet rope, and then go up onto the stage that's right next to them. And so I'm just sort of standing there waiting for them to come with like this like dead-eyed like thousand yard stair waiting and sandoval comes out first and he's like oh we can't take any photos because we have to go do this demo right now and i just like grabbed him and like took the photo with him 
Um, and then he kept walking. And then Schwartz took a bunch of photos with me. <laughs> Schwartz was very <laughs> amenable. Can't say, yeah. I knew he would not yeah, be able to totally. say no. But Sandoval definitely tried to say no, and I just was not going to let that That's happen. so amazing. Yeah. Was your best photo experience Joao? Yeah, Joao was a really interesting experience. So, really? You yeah. went to the below deck panel? Yeah. Okay. So it was also on the first day. And when I got up there, they like really try to rush you through. And I was con ready, like we were going to the OAH or the Berks or whatever. Like, so I had my backpack with me. Mm -hmm. I had business cards like ready to go and stuff. And so they're like pushing me through. Somebody takes my phone and they're just snap. They're just snapping photos like as you're going across. So you get in the photos, whatever is being said between you, all that is captured. And Joao was obsessed with my backpack. Like, all he wanted to do was ask me, like, dude, what's in your backpack? And, like, he was talking about finding me later to see what's in the backpack as they're taking photos <laughs> and stuff. That's what, I mean, is it just a normal backpack? Yeah, it just had my laptop but he just was in concerned it. with what was inside it? I don't want to say that he thought that I was holding something, but... Yeah, it seemed like he was, was he like profiling you because you have a beard or something. No, it's no, no. It wasn't like that. Oh. It was like he thought I had drugs. That was the vibe I got from him. I am like, such an idiot. Yeah. Okay, I, I feel understand. like maybe he was like hoping for like some four twenty friendliness. Yeah, that that was the vibe I got. I mean, from I don't him. think it's that hard to get weed, Joao, in New York City. <laughs> I think mean, he's from Zimbabwe or yeah, I think so. so. Yeah, so like yeah, I don't know if he knows. A, uh, like, he I knows. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to give him anyway, an out. Anyway, I'm, I'm excited that both you were to talk to him. solicited both and that broken. I didn't understand it. That's both really good. Yeah. But he took yeah. a picture with you. Yeah, so yeah. That's good. I got a picture with him, Colin, and Sandy. Were there any of the douchers from this current season there? Or was it just the below med Just Kate guys? was there, but not a dude. With but Captain Lee, right? Yeah, yeah. But None not of the bad dudes. Yeah, I got a picture with Captain Lee basically by rushing the stage <laughs> after the panel was over. That's um, dedication. I just, I just kind of ran right up. And the man, it was his 70th birthday, and yet he's crouching down on the stage. He's squatting to take a picture he with He is the you. best. Something he tells was, me. Go ahead, Max. Oh, I was just going to say, he's very amen amenable to fans. Oh, Yeah. yeah. He's so cute. Yeah, I would have liked to have met him. The stud of the sea, Jessica. Yes, yeah. I imagine he also, yes, we're objectifying right now. I imagine for 70 years old, because I see the TV shows, I mean, he keeps himself in great shape, right? Oh, yeah. It's true. It's true. The simple yeah. observation. You're just not an really observation. objectifying him. Yeah. yeah. Per se. And I also think he would appreciate that. I think so, too. He yeah. strikes me as, you know... Taking pride in his appearance. Yeah, he's a good-looking dude. He is. So, should we talk about the um, Hall of Fame or the Hall of uh, the, the Museum? Museum. Yes, we should. It's on my mental list, and I want to know if you want to watch it happens live. Okay, that was an extra should ticket cost. We have two fails. Lame. Yeah. So, like, there was certain like extra brunches or like the watch what happens live on Friday night. How much was it? Do you know? It was a like lot. it was like more than a hundred dollars, I think, like two fifty or three hundred. Like it was like it would have been so wow. much money to do extra experiences because like even if the ticket was a hundred dollars and they're still going to tack on the taxes and fees so by the time you're done, like you're looking at like another hundred and fifty just to like go sit in like the nosebleed balcony. I'm pretty sure they said there was. Wait, maybe I'm... Everything. Wasn't there like 2,000 people yeah. at the Watch What Happens Live? Oh, no, this was a moneymaker. Yeah. It was huge. Holy guacamole. So we had two read about all kind of BravoCon fails. Well, really one. The first is we... I didn't realize until just the other the day. Fish room. Sorry. Before, before you... Um, before BravoCon, there was a call that went out that if you wanted to be a tweeter or an Instagram, a social media kind of correspondent, that we had to send in a film. And so I saw the ad and said, oh, we must have to do it. We must do it. And Casey and Max took me literally. And so Max did a video, spot on, send it in. And then we kind of forgot about it because we got busy. And then he's en route to BravoCon. And we realized we had been selected to be a social media kind of representative. But by then they had gone on to someone else. So let me just say that next time we won't miss our moment. And then and also... We will have money set aside from all our um, from all our fiscal dealings so that we can go ahead and take advantage of going to watch what happen li ha happens live and everything else that you need to p spend even more money on. So that's a long way of saying we didn't go because it was even more money. In all the things that I read, there was no talk of all the extra money stuff. 
And so often they were talking about how well attended Watch What Happens Live was and how popular it was. Never once was it like, oh, this was also more money. Oh, no. I stayed at the Moxie and I saw some kids literally going down to it in their finery, like the red bottom shoes, everything. And I thought, they don't have a mortgage. (laughs) That's all I thought as I saw them walk out of the hotel. That's wild. Well, particularly if you figure, you know, some of the tickets were $1,500. Yes, Yes, I did read that too. Those were like the ones that were... SVIPs. Oh, those, okay. And then I read that the max price a ticket sold for online was $9,200. That's insane. An SVIP. Wow. That's like crazy. from a scalp, not a scalper. What's it called? Like secondhand sale, you know, yeah, whatever it's called. Scalper? I could see yeah. people paying that. Yeah. I, can, I mean, it really was, it was a moment. Um, the Hall of Fame, ho- I keep calling it the Hall of Fame. The it museum. might as well have been the, the Hall of Fame. Um, we had Tamara's... Um, Breast implants. implants. Yeah. The blue bunny was there. I had to like the take bunny. a moment with the blue bunny. Yeah, you it, have like to. the other ones I sort of like just sort of took photos and then. All this stuff was later. encased, right? Mm-hmm. You couldn't touch. Yeah. Yeah, except for the clothes. But they also had the-, the digital they had the film behind it or the they had the clip from yeah. the episode from the reunion yeah. of um Lisa crying. Oh my yeah, god. Like the one t- tier. Yeah, oh, it was yes. like a two second. The magical clip. one tier. So good. I have pictures of Jen in the fish room. You know, Jen is also very short, but the room was kind of scaled so she could almost touch the fish. She would have really, you know, rearranged the room if she could have. So good. I talked with Dorinda about that picture. Tell us more. See, she had this like (laughs) moment with everyone. (laughs) So she, she asked me, she said, did you, did you go to the museum? Did you see my fish room? And I said, I did. And I would be very happy to stay there. I thought it was a magical space. And I said, I actually, um, my colleague took this beautiful picture, um, this fun picture of me in the fish room. And, you know, I, I want to imagine myself in the Berkshires. And I told her that I'm from Massachusetts and the Berkshires um, has a special place in my heart and everything. And then Hannah kind of interrupted us. So, mm. One of the things that I think Max should tell us about is seeing the first episode of the new Vanderpump Rules season in the Hammerstein Ballroom because they That's aired cool. it in November as like a sneak peek for those that were at BravoCon and then yeah. they did a special on um, um, Below Deck Sailing Yacht too. Yeah, I will say so they showed the trailer for Below Deck Sailing Yacht. I think it was before the Below Deck panel. I could be wrong about that because mm-hmm. it's been a few months. You're but, right. But it was that trailer forced the audience into silence. Like it how really? long was it? It's more than Two what minutes. we've seen? No, it's what you've seen. But okay. like that line where the guy says like, do you think it's funny that my mother still breastfeeds me? Like those Oh, lines. I didn't. I haven't seen oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. There is a number of moments where like it just seems like Below Deck just got amped up. Do you think it's funny that my, my mother, mother still breastfeeds said me? Said by whom? Like a 28 year old man. To and another I'm, man. I'm uncomfortable. I am very <laughs> distraught by that. There was another scene where um, there was a crew member who I would say, or no, no, no. Um, it was a guest, um, a male guest. He was probably over six feet tall, and he picks up a very small crew member, a female crew member, and he's not, like, putting her down. She's like, you need to put me down. Like, with that, like, tell him, like, you need to put me down. Please put me down. Please put me down. And he's like not putting her down. Oh. Like it looked like this season. Assault? Yeah. Yeah. That I feel like, like you also said there was this like moment where like Chef Adam is getting like thrown around his kitchen mm-hmm. from like the way that the boat is I pitching. Saw, that's what I remember. Yeah. It's basically below deck with more vomiting is what it <laughs> seems like. If I had that much money, I just wouldn't be chartering a sailing yacht. I know. Get me that sturdy yacht. I'm not doing that. I couldn't even do the sturdy yacht because I could seasick. Yeah. But like <laughs> that to me seemed yeah, like they were just taking the blow deck playbook and blowing it up yeah. because adding a sailing boat element just, it exploded everything. That's crazy. And then that line about the breastfeeding, it, it there was like an audible gasp in the room. Uh, I would assume so. Yeah. How many gasps were there for the live, um, for the... Um, first plane of the Vanderpump Rules season one or se- episode one it of the It wasn't new so season. much gas but people were very much into the uh the fight as it's happening in the house right from uh, the first season have uh-huh. you uh, seen it from yet? the new season yeah are we yeah. talking about like Lala and Kristen and Katie yeah Katie yeah, yeah. and like, over Carter yeah over Carter that got a lot yeah. of like 
I mean, it felt like a sports event to me, the way that people were like cheering and booing, totally. etc. Dude, there is some Vanderpump drama. Have you guys yeah. seen all that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, they really, this is really They really right need now, to I feel rectify like, that. They being Bravo. I feel like there's such strong feelings. Like I, I feel anxiety, I feel anger with below deck and Vanderpump rules. Like they're really tapping into something in my core right now on Bravo where I, like I feel like I need to be in a safe space when I'm watching. <laughs> like there's there's a lot of um real intense stuff happening. Jen actually had emailed us and was like, I think if they don't give me a below deck reunion, I'm going to need some sort of special totally. feminist like therapy I cleanse. I totally agree. And I, I totally agree. And I'm, I've been sitting with my thoughts, trying to figure out how H on H would go about this because I feel like there's so much happening right now in the Bravo universe that just, I feel like we need a little bit of therapy. There's some pretty heavy stuff. There's some pretty, yeah. So, um, so yeah, this whole issue with what's happening, especially with Vanderpump Rules right now and That's, the social media history of so Max bad. and Brett, I actually posted a really stupid article this morning on the H on H Twitter about Lisa Vanderpump essentially um, being like, oh, well, they've apologized. They were teens and they've made uh, amends. And, yeah, you know, yeah. it's unfortunate that they did this, but they've learned and they've grown. And I stand by I stand by my desire to have a diverse workspace and promote equality and, you know, you know, social justice. But, you know, but it was like it was so like, OK, like I'm fairly certain yeah, no. like the diversity that could be on the show totally is not right. Billy Lee is no right. longer there. Right. Um, there's really like faith. no people of color, like the faith. They were completely horrible too. She was completely. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? What's the word made to be a complete monster. Mm-hmm. And it was just such a, biz- like I, I tweeted with the article, like, okay, what does their, because she said that they had, you know, essentially apologized and shown that they're not like that anymore or whatever. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how they've made their contrition for this or like, like it was, so, it was such a bizarre defense by Lisa. Yeah. You know, and if you think about it, she's like willing to fire James for fat shaming Katie. Right. But, but like right. she has like stood by lots of homophobic, transphobic issues within her cast. And now this kind of like racism and like, of course, like the sexism that always happens. So it just, it like, there seems to be this massive disconnect. It's really, really Uh, bad. And if you put it together with what, you know, I I felt actually like I got closure from the Real Housewives of Dallas reunion where, you know, Carrie's comments to Leanne of, you know, you've apologized. That's great. But actions speak much louder. And by the way, your apology doesn't actually seem that great. Um, I thought that like Andy actually, telling Leanne that she was lying when she kept trying to sidestep responsibility and, and point out that she kept making these racist comments and that the producers were shocked. She kept doing that. Like we don't usually like Andy doesn't usually talk about the, I, I don't know if that's counting as breaking the fourth wall, but he doesn't talk about the production aspects that much. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that was actually really useful. Um, and I liked that Dallas, you know, to have those women talking about race, was interesting um and and but i i liked that we kind of got that moment of uh them standing up that way and yet you've got these other shows where it just seems that production either doesn't care that these people have this patch or they're not doing the research which seems kind of shocking um and one more thought on that is um i I used Jessica and Max's trick of standing right next to where the microphone goes before the microphone comes out in order to get the first question at the Andy Cohen panel Sunday morning at BravoCon. So I was the first question, and um, I think that was a mistake because I was first, I felt too nervous to ask the question I wanted, which is, why are you going to have an integrated cast? Mm. You know, like, why, do, why can't we, why, why can black women only be in Atlanta or Potomac? You know, why can't we have these casts? Um, you know, you're going to talk about a diverse cast on Vanderpump Rules? Really? Yeah. What did you ask? What did you end up asking? I asked something silly. I asked, you know, why Utah for the next, why Salt Lake City for the next Housewives? Yeah. Um, 
What did he say? And he said, you know, there's a lot that's interesting there. And this is a new group of women that we haven't seen before. Um, We are going to explore their religion as well as their culture. And, you know, it just gives us a new new opportunity. And it's, you know, not from the coast. So that's also nice. Of course, it would be better to have Chicago, I think. Anyway, um, and so I I asked two things. I asked that. And then I also asked if um, now that he's a father... Does he? Does it give him any new insight or new criticism of the parenting of this housewife so far? And he said, for that, for the Salt Lake like, City thing, it was basically parroting what he had already said about the what, about why Salt Lake City. But for the parenting thing, he said, you know, of course I judge them. That's why we watch them is because we want to because what they do is completely ludicrous and they're terrible parents. But he didn't quite say they're terrible parents, but you know, it's their parenting is something that we watch to judge. So there's nothing new there. Yeah, that's true. Did you so have like a, wasted questions? No. Did you have a favorite moment from BravoCon? Like the mm. like the end all be all, like it was completely worth it for this one moment. Aerobic, probably. I that's would if what the Vulture article said too. <laughs> I would travel for that class. If that was a regular class on the Upper East Side, it would take me probably an hour and 20 minutes to get there from my apartment. And I, I have a gym I pay a lot of money for, two buildings over from where I live. But I would travel an hour and 20 minutes to take a regular Dorobic. Oh, I'm sure that you'll be able to buy so a DVD fun. pretty soon here. <laughs> that would I'm be great. sure. But she, she knew how to work that crowd. She kept coming off the stage and... Um, it, you know how um, a school of fish moves around <laughs> when you have a, the, the, when they do films of sea life and something comes into the water and the, the fish all go to one direction. Yeah. It was sort of like that. Everybody would swarm Dorinda and then she would come out and everybody would go back to their normal swimming. Um, so it was fun. The music was great. Um, she kept throwing t-shirts out at the crowd and people would get excited for that. And it was just a good time. That I got amazing. sweaty. It was good exercise. How fun. Was there something that you wish was like just totally re- could be rethought by the BravoCon planning? Because like I remember wondering like, okay, is this going to be a little bit like Fire Island where people get there and it's just complete chaos and like super flops? The Fire or, Festival? Yes. Fire or is this going to be like the most amazing weekend ever. And so it sounds like maybe it was somewhere in between with like kind of Um, just a first time trial and error. So like what, what would be your recommendation for Bravo con year two? Um, sorry, can I add on for the, the, my favorite moment? I also had a good moment where I was sorry, um, with Brooke Williamson, where she was uh, the winner of top chef. I forget which now, 10. Anyway, she, she did a cooking demo. So I got to eat some of her food and then meet her and talk with her, oh, cool. um, where I admitted to her that I had rooted for her on her first season, um, where she lost. And I, I apologize because everybody I ever root for on Top Chef loses. <laughs> um, so I feel responsible. Like, I just shouldn't pick anybody. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, I think they need to get the Davit Center. They needed a bigger space. Um, they needed to devote much more space to the bazaar because that was a really popular space. Uh, they uh, they needed to be in one location because the whole deal of like leaving one location and going to another, they, they were pretty far apart. You know, I, I don't walk slowly and it was a 15, 20 minute walk between locations. Um, and and be, because of that, I kept getting caught out in the cold and it was cold. Yeah. Uh, so being being in a building, or if they're going to say that general admission people have to leave at a panel after a panel is over, then they actually need to make those people leave so that others get a chance to come in. Because what was happening is people were coming into the room, and then they were just hunkering down for the whole day in that space, and nobody knew could come in. Mm. And so I really think it was just about space. Yeah management but my other huge complaint is the lack of food there was not Mm. but i would have paid a lot of money for food you know i thought they were supposed to have like lots of food and i thought that they were like advertising like top chef food there were four four food items one was a meatball one was some kind of pasta and the other two were desserts now granted i'm diabetic and have a shellfish allergy so like 
I think two of the things, like the, the dessert was completely out for me because of the sugar. And then there was something maybe shellfishy. I think there was maybe a taco that had no meat protein in it. And so it wasn't going to work for me. Um, but there were only four things for sale for food inside. Uh, that's insufficient. No, that's, um, yeah. They were coming around with the, oh goodness, it's the, something pop, pop ups, pop ums, some kind of snack food. They were coming around with those a lot. Now, granted, I was eating a lot of macaroons, so I was not being diabetically careful. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, just more options that had, like, that were meals. I I think on Sunday they had a food truck maybe around the corner, uh, but I was scared to leave the building and not be able to get back in for my Real Housewives experience, right? So I wasn't going to go out. They had me as a captive audience for hours and hours and hours. And there was very little food to, to find. This makes sense because Max was saying that there were so many women in attendance who were drinking from like the moment they got there. Um, and But also like dressed uh, dressed up as their favorite housewife or whatever. But they were so completely intoxicated that as the day wore on, he was saying it was harder and harder and harder to stand in lines because people were just so messy. (laughs) But it makes sense to me that like the messiness, I mean, anytime people are all day drinking, sure. But especially if you're not allowing them any easy access to food. Yeah, totally. This, This sounds like I'm glad I didn't see the bathrooms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think they are going to have to rethink a lot of logistics for this year. It seems like it just based on, yeah, security and space. It seems like there's a lot to improve, but that's, you know, that's exciting for this year. But you're right that it, it really did have the potential to become a fire festival. And it didn't. <laughs> it was, it was, it is amazing how well they pulled it off. And the spaces were beautiful. I'll post, I'll send you some of my pictures too of, you know, even the stairwell down from the, um, the Housewives Museum to, I can't believe it was the Housewives Museum. It was amazing. <laughs> um, the stairwell down from there to kind of a, a panel space and a step and repeat were uh, like just decorated with neon signs with Housewives sayings and leaves. And like, there were all these little spaces in the ballrooms on the first floor, they had mirrors in the women's bathroom. You know, not in the bathroom, but in the antechamber. You know, those fancy women's bathrooms you see in older buildings. They had this beautiful uh, antechamber. And on the mirrors, they had sayings like, who's going to check me, boo? And you could take a picture of yourself um, with close your legs to married men on the mirror above <laughs> your face. Wow. They thought of everything then. I mean, in terms of... Yeah capturable moments right things that you could share online Um, yeah if you're thinking about branding and mm -hmm. instagram opportunities there were lots of pictures you know kate chastain um with a quote and you know james kennedy with a quote um and you know i missed a lot of the panels but the smaller stage had moments like tom and ariana mixing cocktails or tom and tom making cocktails brooke william brooke making food um i saw chef ben and kate chastain do a I don't know if it was a competition but he was cooking nachos and she was doing a tablescape um you know just like these oh James Kennedy was DJing um so lots of atmospheric sort of things where you could be walking through a space and catch a little bit of that almost like a a, you know like a regular convention show Hmm. very interesting is, are there anything, is there anything else from your BravoCon experience or do you have any other questions that you kind of Well, I was actually thinking into? about that. I was thinking about that Watch What Happens Live. I didn't get to see it in person, but I did watch on TV that Watch What Happens Live fight between Ramona and Vicky. And it reminded me of your conversation in the last episode about, as, as I, we're recording your last episode, um, about who has the claim to the biggest ego, but also, you know, the the ownership of the shows um, where Vicky and Ramona kind of went at it about who's responsible for the show blowing up. And you know, Teresa was probably just sitting behind them being like, I'm in this, I have like a, you know. I have a dog in this fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I, I should also talk about Tinsley, um, so at the at the big ballrooms um, for the 
the Real Housewives of New York panel, they before the, before the panels, they had little areas on the side where they would come out and record something. And I imagine that those aired on TV, but I, I didn't get to see much TV that weekend. Um, so Tinsley came out and recorded a little something. Dorinda came out and recorded a little something. And then they had spaces up above, kind of in the balcony, where they were playing games. And I think those were for the VIP, SVIP folks that we couldn't go up there, but they could. And they could participate in the games and have meet and greets. Um, but if you were wily and could kind of maneuver your way through a crowd, which as a little person, I can, uh, I'm like five feet tall. So I kind of scooted my way over to where the recording was. And I got some great photos of Dorinda and Luann who looked amazing. Um, and Tinsley, um, but then Tinsley and Dale, so they would record and they would go back inside and then they would come out on the, the main stage a little bit and then go back inside. So kind of teasing moments to keep the crowd there, keep them engaged. Tinsley and Dale came out and Tinsley was kind of posing for photos and she looked good and um, had a little, like a bunch of us were kind of shouting things at her and she had like little bits of conversation and she was fine. But then when she came out for the, she, she said, I'm sorry guys, I got to go back in. I got to get a drink. I can't do this without a drink. And so she went back inside and when she came out for the panel, she was trashed. Whoa. Like to the point that she kept saying the same things over and over again. Um, like Eesh. you could see the other women visibly irritated with her, even though none of them were exactly sober. Um, wow. yeah, it was clear that they are not, fr- I mean, we all know they're not really friends, but that they, they tolerate her and only just barely. Was the countess drinking again? Not noticeably, but, uh, I think she was there to work. Mm. I think she made a lot of money. On Saturday, she was there. Yeah, for I was gonna say. Hours. I feel like there was also like a show with the Countess. Like you could go to a Countess mm. Cabaret, but I feel like yeah. that was another one of those experiences that you had to get an extra ticket for. You did, and it was ridiculously overpriced. I I happen to have seen the Countess's Cabaret show twice, oh. both times for a Groupon ticket of twenty five dollars. Wow! I think it was worth every penny penny of the twenty five dollars, but not a cent more. Wow. Can you please tell us about the cabaret show? Oh, sure. Of course. Happy to. So I've seen the regular one and then I saw the Christmas show. Not this past, was it, was it really over a year ago? So not this past Christmas, but the one before I saw the holiday show. Um, So the, it was the holiday show, I think, where she was doing the bongos. So I think I saw her when she first came out of rehab too early. I saw a show then, wow. and then I saw the holiday show, like, much later. Did and she have the Giovanni song at the holiday oh, show? Oh, yes. Uh, at the hall, hmm, I can't remember now. I think the Giovanni show- song was later. Okay. When I saw her first show, the Giovanni episode had not aired. But, oh, this is great. So she kept heckling herself by calling out Giovanni but nobody knew what the heck she was talking about because that episode hadn't aired yet. Oh, and she kept oh, saying no. things like that'll make sense in a few weeks, oh, but it was no. almost like oh, that's she weird. had, do you know how you have a class where it goes really, really well, but only because one student happens to make the right comment. And then the next time you teach that class, that student isn't there, but you need that comment to happen to make the class work. That's so funny. It felt like she needed the heckling to give her the energy she needed for the show and didn't know what to do without it. Oh, Yikes. This is so tragic. It is. Yeah. Um, the second time around, I think she had been back to rehab and she had taken up the bongo drums. And so her bongo drum teacher came out and there was a very long bongo interlude That's where funny. she's just kind of like, like almost in a trance. Playing the bongo. I just can't imagine that. Wow. Good for I you. I think I have going a video. Twice. Good for you. Yes, this is true fandom. I almost even bought merch the second time, but resisted. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would go again, but I certainly, I think they were charging over a hundred dollars for the cabaret show at BravoCon, right? Yeah, and I, I just can't see spending that much money on the cabaret agreed yeah i mean it's yes especially because i feel like 
the cabaret would always be a little tragic. And can I just say that my favorite moment from that big BravoCon watch what happens live was the fact that Andy was like, okay, I'm finally going to sing my favorite, my very favorite housewife song. Right. But like, how many housewives now have hit singles Mm -hmm. that, you know, and like you could just see like the frustration on so many women's faces. I forget which one it was. He's, he did. Don't be tardy. Tardy. And, and Kim and, came and Kim came out, came out right. and it was like neither one of them know the words to that song, but it was like right? so funny. And to me, it's just like, oh, it's like so shady to like all of these like dozens of housewives who have song after song after song, and you know that for like that, you know. Um, uh, the game that they played, you know, where Ramona was like in a feud with everybody, you know, Countess Luann was like so ticked in that moment that, yeah, that none of her songs were mm. going to be the favorite. I should also say about poor Luann. I should also say about the cabaret uh, from the perspective of the women who must have had to go multiple times and were on strike and not going to see the cabaret anymore. Seeing, having seen it twice, the, the whole cabaret is, is stitched together with this um, reading of her diary. So she's got this bedazzled diary she reads from. Wow. And uh, like like moments when she first met the housewives, the moment she was arrested, um, you know, various moments in her history. And it's the same diary readings each time. Wow. So it's so, not real. Is no. It real? So she comes out. No. She, I, I, it's definitely not a real diary. Okay. She comes out. She reads. She pretends. She reads something from the diary. Um, and then she does a song related to that. And then she oh. reads something else. And it's the same jokes about going to jail. And um, oh, I forget. It's not Jailhouse Rock, but it's another song kind of riffing on the idea of being in jail. And if you've seen it multiple times and you're not there because you're having a laugh at the experience of going, you know, like I could see Rocky Horror Picture Show 20 times, um, but I'm not there because I think it's good, you know? Um, and if you're kind of doing this as a work obligation, I could see it being very tedious. Yes. I really want people or I want someone I know to go to Stassi's show because I feel like it's the same, the same kind of thing. Like, it just seems absolutely tragic and weird. And how far can she take this? And the things I've seen on Instagram are like the weirdest clips ever of her and Bo lip singing. It's just so strange. And it, it feels like the same vibe that you're talking about. Um, I think that was Luan. just advertised to me. I wonder if she's coming to New York someplace close to me. You got to go, uh, Jen. You got to go. I re- I remember thinking, should I go to this? Should I not go to this? Like, I feel like I can see Stassi all the time on TV. Um, so why? I I should Google. I'll find out. But I, I think maybe there's this one performance space that I really like in um, Huntington, New York. And I think maybe she was going there. Um, Stassi tour. Can you see why we consider Jen the on-the-ground reporter? Yes. She's so... <laughs> resourceful and like she has this incredible encyclopedic memory for everything bravo i love it yeah you know i'm i'm um tortured by my performance in the bunko game (laughs) that i did not remember (laughs) accurately and i have to say i've never been so clearly myself as i was in that game when i was outraged (laughs) i was very wrong i was very outraged that's so funny I do have one more thing um, that has happened, or actually it, it, it's in the process of happening anyway. Um, so I'm not very active on Twitter. Uh, Twitter intimidates me because it's so public. Um, and I'm, I'm very concerned about, uh, you know, saying the wrong thing and somehow, you know, blowing up for the wrong reasons. Um, but because my book is out, I'm trying to tweet more about that. But at the same time, going to BravoCon, I very much got into the Twitter games. I'm a little bit... <laughs> Um, embarrassed by how much I was tweeting about Bravo at the same time that I really should be marketing my book. Um, mm-hmm. So I hope the people who are following me to learn more about monastic women in the Middle Ages uh, were able to deal with, you know, all my below deck tweets. That's so um, funny. But because I was tweeting so much, Bravo slipped into my DMs. 
and said that they were excited to see how I was whooping it up at BravoCon and asked me for my address and said that they would like to send me something to thank me for how much I was tweeting about BravoCon. Um, what? And then, and then nothing arrived. Oh my goodness. And then, and then in December, so December 16th, they, they came back into my DMs. And of course, this is the time when I'm, you know, ordering the Christmas presents for my enormous family. So there's nothing, and I'm a mother of young boys, so I don't leave my house very much. And like everything's arriving in the mail. And every time I got a notification that my building received a package for me, I'm like, it's Bravo! It's a ride! <laughs> um, and it was, you know, another package with somebody's Christmas presents. And um, so in December, like December 16th, Bravo came back in and said, we want to reconfirm your address. We'll be sending you your gift to arrive at the, for the new year. And I said, okay, great. Fantastic. Well, it's January, what? 17th, 18th. Yeah. Wow. Um, and nothing has arrived. And so yesterday, you know, I don't want to be that person who's like, where's my gift? Yo. Um, uh, yeah, but- <laughs> you do. I want to know what that gift is. So yesterday I replied and said, you know, I'm going to be recording with a pot with, I, with the historians on housewives podcast. You got your little name in there, a uh, little name drop in there. And, uh, tomorrow when I'd like to talk about this, but I don't know, you know, is there something still coming or have I missed it? And they said, no, 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 it should arrive very soon. Um, I don't know what it is, but I really, you know, as somebody who wanted a tote bag and could not get a tote bag, I'm really hoping that it's a tote bag, but then I think, am I thinking too small? Should I be rooting for watch what happens live tickets? Oh, wow. That would be amazing. I mean, considering you live in New York, that's a possibility. Yes, wow. and uh, there's no, there doesn't seem to be any way to get those tickets. Although Andy no. said that they're often on the charity site. They're if you often keep- on auction, yeah. You have to know someone. The audience is like less than 30 people, or at least it was before they moved. It might be less than 40 people or something now. I don't That's think Max amazing. and I would have ever gotten in to watch what happens live in Los Angeles without knowing people at Bravo. Yeah. Because I feel like they had to put us on a special list. Yeah, and that was Los Angeles where there was probably thousands of people. And right? the and the space for the recordings are much larger. Right. There's literally, it's it used to be a 12-person studio, and now I think it's 30. Mm. And it's always like friends of whoever. So that's what I've heard so anyway. They, do you know Slade's story of how he got on? how he and Joe got on um, Real House of Orange County, right? That he, there was a charity auction and he bought the opportunity to be on the show. So I feel like uh, every time I see the idea, like I've, I've Googled, how do I get on, get to watch, watch what happens live. They say, you know, these charity sites. So I feel like it's the slaves of this world who are getting in and that doesn't feel right. That's so funny. I yeah. didn't know that Slade got on through some sort of auction thing. I didn't either. Well, he it, said didn't, it. it didn't really work for him. He had to fall in love with Gretchen in order to stay relevant. And I don't know. Maybe it worked relevant. for him because he went from Joe to Lori to Gretchen. So he managed to stay on and kind of relevant for many years. Maybe. That's true. I don't know. <laughs> it was, I, I it would was like in to the argue special. his relevance, but yeah. Yeah. That's funny. What is the argument against his relevance? I'm curious. I, he's just not on the show. Out of 14 seasons, he's just he's been on maybe four and just very loosely as like a plus one. Well, here in California, you know, um, we have legal marijuana now. And so, of course, Tamara and Eddie created their own brand. And I don't know if it's like CBD and or whatever, but Gretchen and Slade made their own brand, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and allegedly, Is it Gretchen Christine? <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, their brand got slammed for not containing the amount of <gasps> either THC or CBD that it was said to have had. Interesting. And so then I think Tamara and Eddie had to come out and be like, no, our product has what it says it has though. Right. Just as like, tr- like, Tamara instant, like and Eddie are damage such, control. Like whatever. I don't even know what the word is. Like just jump on the latest trend and try to do it. And they're never very successful. Their gym, I think I told you is right next to our pediatrician's office. Mm-hmm. It's, always completely empty and I don't know if it's because their hours are really crappy or they just truly have no clientele but they are there's never anyone in the parking lot ever it's very strange I don't how do they keep that I've heard that from a bunch of people how do they stay afloat 
they, I mean, okay, allegedly, I wouldn't be surprised if they kept the business open just so that they would as have a front. As, a, as a space to have a lot of tax write-offs that maybe what they can write um, off is greater than the loss. Than the loss. But the, the, allegedly, I have no idea. Yeah. But that's what would maybe make sense to me. They don't seem like the most honest or smart business people that have ever walked through Orange County, in my opinion. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah. Who so, knows? I'm man. so excited to have heard of your experience, Jen. You made me so jealous. It was so nice to live vicariously through you, though. Well, I'm really grateful. I'm sorry that Casey wasn't able to go, but I was really grateful to be able to go in her stead. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, like, such an interesting process because I had to, like – do a lot of emailing with like Bravo people in charge of BravoCon to make sure that Jen could get in Wow, with my your, ticket. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, thank so, you so much. Oh, yeah. I no, really of appreciate course. it. So I had to like be hooked up with the right person to reassign my ticket. So should anything happen, it wasn't like popping up like you stole a ticket. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh, I could have gone to Bravo jail. Well, and I was like, I was like, I'm sure scalping is a thing. Yeah. But like, I also wanted to make sure that like H on H collectively didn't like overstep boundaries or like do something inappropriate because I didn't want it to reflect on my friends at Bravo Ooh. or on H on H. So I was like, very much like we are going to do this by the book. <laughs> yeah, no, that's smart. Next year, we'll all go. And I keep saying next year, this year. Yes. The other thing I, it's occurring to me that we should probably do is at some point we should probably have a special show where we maybe actually rank and evaluate housewives products. Yeah, that's a good one. I would listen to that. Mm. I will listen to them all, but I would love to listen to that. Yeah. I don't have any, I don't think. Well, like, you know, if like we went out and we did a shopping trip and we got like a wine by wives and like a skinny girl and oh, like, actually, and like a witches of Weho, that, and then maybe like a shannon bedore tv dinner and you know you know just grab have, the products and then like actually yeah like do samplings as a as like a special uh, episode yeah that'd be wonderful and so fun yeah there was a period of time where my local wine shop had a large stock of Ramona Pinot Grigio, and it was my standard wine to bring for parties. Was it good? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was serviceable wine, but it was not. That's so funny. I she was would... only purchasing it for Ramona. Oh, my gosh. That was that's so, funny. so funny. I feel like Max has looked really hard for Ramona's Pinot Grigio, and we cannot get it. <laughs> I don't know that they still make it. She I never talked so. about it anymore, which yeah. means it's probably gone. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to try all of their skin creams. Yeah, all of them, <laughs> yeah. It would take quite a while to get through the products, but it would be so fun. <laughs> I'd love it. Well, thank you both so much for doing this. And um, this you. is amazing. I, Yes, I definitely was living vicariously through you and Max and Jessica as I laid in bed. <laughs> <laughs> And, and of course, you know, it was like, it was cold in California and raining, of course, not cold, like New York, you know, but raining. And um, I had to like figure out how I was going to like make it up and down the stairs and like take the dog outside. And it was, I, I just felt like it was like the longest weekend home alone. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I like your social media that weekend was fantastic. It was like on fire. You so I could I could understand why they're gonna send you something in the mail. I can't wait. What could it be? When will it get here? Just let us know ASAP. It's very important information. <laughs> Maybe you'll get one of the mazel things. Oh yeah, that would be fun. That would be. Fun. I also have to say, I wish I had thought more carefully about my outfit for the housewives tagline experience because. I was basically wearing teaching clothes in layers because it was cold outside. And I had spent a lot of Saturdays standing in the cold. So I'm wearing like this big bulky sweater where you can see other people knew what they were doing. And they were wearing like fabulous outfits and their makeup was all done. And I'm like carried in my big cardigan and like I need to rush off to dinner with my family. This Um, is what makes you like a Bravo Demic though, right? right. That like it is like this combination of ultimate fandom but like you are 
also just always an academic. <laughs> That's it's true. Right. <laughs> right. Like the practicality of like thinking through your day. <laughs> and of course, you know, how many people were sitting there grading midterms no, <laughs> right, on the couches right. in the lounge space? That's so funny. While Dolores Catania walks behind. Like, I, I was trying to have my phone ready so when people would walk by. So I snapped a couple of pictures of Dolores behind me, but she was moving quick. And I basically just got, like, her butt. <laughs> so silly. Well, thank you. And um, we'll be in touch. And I'm so excited for chapters. And yeah. we're about to announce calls for season two episodes. So it's been a fantastic season. And thank you both for contributing twice. Yeah, it was my pleasure. So fun. Thank you for having me. Like, I really... I love listening to these. Every time the episode drops, I try to run to my phone to listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> We've been like struggling to get them out on time. Uh, Max and I just moved and he does all of our editing. And with the baby about to come, I'm sure it's going to get funky scheduling again. But we're going to try to keep our first and 15th. So anyway, I hope you guys both have a lovely weekend. Thanks. You too. You too. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you so much for joining us on our season finale of Historians on Housewives. As always, you can find us at historiansonhousewives.com where you can propose your own episode topic, ask us questions, and send us feedback. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Historians H. And don't forget that you can like and review the podcast on your podcast platform. Thank you to our special guests, Martina Baldwin and Jed Edwards. This show was brought to you with the support by Barbara and Mark Spear, Saddleback Community College, Christina Hinkle, Christina Gamberpour, Jed Merlaski, Pete Murray, Yvonne Ballardas, Cody Baker, Molly Callahan, Dr. Joaquin Galarza, Courtney Crow, Laura Lauper, Kim Bettendorf, and Louis Asio de Dios. And remember, scholars do bravo too. I'm too pregnant right. to be expected at the job talk, so. <laughs> the chairs are going to be really uncomfortable, too, and if I stand, it might slide out faster, so no one wants that. They're there right now. I saw on Instagram. I don't know what they're doing there, but they're there. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe it'll be Lala's mom. Just kidding.